And so what remesh does is it'll do the hard work of actually creating a brand new mesh on this existing mesh. Uh, and it, you'll, you'll notice that it actually automatically marked those edges with red boundaries. And that's because we want to preserve those sharp edges. We don't want those to get lost. If I want to include others, like perhaps this chamfer line here, I just drop the angle down to 20. I hit apply. And when we turn on the edges, you'll see uh, a much more typical type of mesh for working with our surfacing. Uh, you'll see things like you know, a much denser grid, much denser uh, mesh of polys, more uniform in nature. If you turn off the edges, you've still got the model definition. If you want a higher resolution, you just simply hit reset. Maybe drop this value down from 0.15 to 0.1. Instead of 25,000 triangles, you'll probably get something closer to about uh, 122,000. Now, see, and the thing I didn't do there is I forgot to use the existing boundaries. So that, that's why it, preserving those boundaries is important, uh, is because you want to keep those sharp edges, and you don't want those getting, kind of, quote, melted off. So uh, I encourage you to take a look at Remesh. We'll do another example just to, uh, kind of uh, to reinforce the notion of what it's good for. Um, I do expect that this command would have value outside of just uh, this particular example, uh, which is kind of the CAD-like STL. And by that, I mean it would probably have use um, as a tool for uh, repairing meshes or you know, scan data that's kind of rough, um, like on that Winnie the Pooh scan. If it was a very rough data set, it might not be a bad idea to just let us kind of reskin it or rewrap it with a new set of polygons. So this is kind of the result that you would get out of that.